Yo, what's going on guys? Today I am going to be showing you how I made my Digital Underground VIP. Just came out on my Altered Underground VIP record that we just put out with Wakan. I wanted to walk through some of the bass sound design, the drums, and how I utilize the original stems to create a new flavor. I'm going to be giving the original stems away for all my Patreon members. If you're not a part of the Patreon, you can sign up via the link below. Yeah, super stoked to be showing you guys this. So let's get into it i thought this was really cool because i managed to utilize most of the stems from the original track and find creative ways especially in the drop to reuse them real quick let's kind of play up through the uh i'll just kind of skim the intro get into the build and then i'll show you guys the drop Right, so, and then we have this, uh, this second house drop. Kind of like a cool anthemic twist. Real quick, I'll just show you guys the original drop, just so you guys can get the flavor if you're unfamiliar with the song. Right, so the original is in 140 beats per minute, and um, the the VIP is in 130. I thought a slow trap, kind of heavy, chuggy version of this song would be really cool. Let's just dive into the intro and kind of everything that was in here. Um, the intro is honestly, it's pretty much made up of all the original stems and then just like some, a, a few newer things. But yeah, felt like using the original stems was fine. So got some like atmosphere and little bleepy R2-D2 sounds. Right here. Some sweeps, little war horns. All right, kind of standard intro stuff. Sounds like this ghost is just swimming around your head some shit uh we got some zappy arps kind of like trancy arps gotta wheel up little tape stop effects and stuff like that nothing too out of the ordinary just and of course the vocal which was real easy and the good thing about like remixing your own tunes, I highly recommend doing this, is when you have all the stems already mixed. So I didn't have to really change anything with the original stems. I just had to make them fit into this new context, which was a lot of fun. Little drums and effects in the beginning, like kind of like clap impact stuff. I have this little snare build here. And it's just filtering up over the course of these like three bars here and gets us into the drum break that comes in. Right, so this next eight bars right here was to obviously keep all the elements that we had before and keep the music going and introduce the theme, but also to introduce the groove of the song that's gonna be coming in in the drop. So I, I think I used the same exact kick from the original track. It's like my favorite kick in my library. Pro tip, spend a day and find 10 that you really like that you can use in every song. Or go to past songs and reuse those kicks because you already know that they work in, in certain contexts. Snare, I really like. And we have this, uh, this snare tail here. So this is a rack that I made. It's just white noise. And this filter right here is controlling the way that the white noise opens up. Essentially what we can do is use the release time here and make 
the white noise decay as long as we want to. So we can make it super long like this, or we can make it nice and short. So for me, I really like layering this on top of snares because it adds this top end clarity that we want a lot in snares or claps. So you can see it's mixed pretty, pretty far behind the main snare, but it just gives us this little coat. We got these like kind of old school shakers here. I took, I actually took these from a completely different track. I've just pulled in this group and I just felt like these had like a cool swing and nice like old school dusty feeling to them. They're very acoustic, so I thought they just layered in nicely behind everything. So the drums all together, they sound like this. Little like reverse snares. Uh, and then we got the top loop from Scorcher, actually. My song Scorcher, that came out on Wakan like two or three years ago. I love those. And then this Bandles rhythm loop that just sounded good. I use this all the time. Little reverse glass sounds, and it wouldn't be a Sully song unless I use the Uzi glass sample. Use that in literally every single song. Yeah, so we got this uh, this build up here. Again, I'm using this snare build right here. Shout out to Effin for showing me this. It's so simple, but it's just grabbing a snare and filtering it up and making it move that way and automating frequency and the resonance. At the beginning of this buildup, we're accenting this fundamental in the snare by boosting the resonance and keeping the cutoff frequency down lower. And then over the course of time, we're opening up that frequency and then we're bringing down the resonance. So it, it starts at just like an accented fundamental. And then we gradually kind of smooth out the snare over the course of time and automate volume as well to kind of give this perception that the snare is creeping in closer to us from being farther away at first. So it sounds like just like a little knock at the door and then gradually it's getting closer and closer to us. A uh, little build clap just to help with accent. And then I'm using the extra build drums from the original song as well. Pro tip, layer in top drums on your buildups. Cymbals, splashes, crashes, rides, whatever. Layer those in because they add a lot of natural acoustic energy in your buildups. And it really helps build energy going into your drop. Otherwise, I think I'm just using the effect stems. And yeah, that kind of gets us into the drop. Another thing that I do is I tease the drop idea that's coming, you're hearing that sound kind of like creep in and it's almost this like, this way of revealing your hand, but not all of it, foreshadowing essentially. So that's this synth right here. And what I'm doing is I'm washing out the sound and filtering it down during the buildup. And that's just on during the build and in the context, you kinda, you kind of hear it creeping back there, but you don't, it's not up front. It's just this subtle foreshadowing to the drop, and that way everything feels connected once we get to the drop. Then we get to the drop. Nice. It's uh, pretty gnarly. So I'm going to show you guys the stems that I actually used from the original track. I have this this stem called Drop Hits, and it's just all the, like the main accent sounds from the original, right? Like the big reese. I, I mean, I love those sounds already. I didn't feel like it was super necessary to like replace those, but they also land in a different place in the arrangement. In the original, they're at completely different parts of the song. In this version, I'm using them more as like the front pieces and kind of like the downbeat accent sounds opposed to some of the other songs that sounds that were in the original. So that becomes kind of our point of emphasis. Um, I also have this noisy layer from the original that's layered in behind it as well. Together, those just sound like very complimentary, like the noise fills in some of the top end and just gives us a little bit of a push. So let's walk into kind of the main sound design here. It's the this big stack of sounds, right? So the main one is, I call it the G4 synth. Let's uh, turn all of this off and just see what it sounds like with nothing on it. 
It's literally just a sine wave. I just started throwing a bunch of stuff on it. Um, there's an auto pan here. That makes it like a tractor beam, right? Overdrive, saturator, erosion. It gives it like this cool buzzy sound. Couple OTTs, cause why not? But if you have headphones on, you can hear how like wide and stereo that is. It's kind of like ping ponging back and forth in between the left and right. I wanted like the meat of the sound, like all of like the low mid layers and the sub to be right down the middle. And then you hear this zappy thing like kind of tripping out on the sides. It's ear candy, but it's also the main element of the song. It all stems from one sine wave, that puny little starting tone that we heard. And then we just took it down this random rabbit hole of sound design and turned it into something pretty cool. So let's walk through some of these layers here. We have this buzzy boy. And again, it's just this random rack. Let's go to the starting point here. So it starts as that, and it ends as this kind of low mid reduxy tone. What I did was I used a saturator on sinoid fold mode to kind of accentuate certain frequencies. We got to this point, and then what I did was I just went fishing with an EQ, and I carved out the low mids right there as a cool layer. And then I put a redux on it. And that's the meat of the sound right there. The rest of this is just like EQing. That's like carving out the sound. And then it's just this kind of buzzy low mid tone that's super cool on top. And I also have, again, just going crazy with post-processing these, like, just to take these sounds from zero to hero. Starts out as this. And it turns into this like sizzly top layer with like no mid content in it. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm using stuff like amps and clippers and saturation, whatnot to beef the sound up and get it nice and crispy uh, in the high end. And then I'm cutting away all of that tone just so it can serve as a kind of sizzly layer on top. Right? And I'm doing a similar thing here, but these are a little more minimal. In Serum, we have this like sawtooth here. And it starts out as this. All right, so it's just a sawtooth with some noise and a, a low pass on it. A little bit of distortion. Again, doesn't sound all that special. Uh, putting a little bit of OTT and saturator on it. Beef it up. Amp. Amp is the sauce. If you don't use amp, you need to start using it. A little EQ. So this is kind of filling out our mids and our, our low mids to give the sound a little bit more body. And then we have this like other main lead here. It's just a saw wave, another spectral layer, but the patch doesn't even really matter. A little bit of hyper and compression. The patch doesn't really matter. What matters is the post-processing. It takes it from this to that. And that's all coming from this overdrive. What I like doing with overdrives is using the input filter here, targeting certain frequencies. So in this case, I'm targeting the low end and using that as the input sound for the post-processing coming after it. So what I did here was I just target the lows so that it becomes a more dull sound. Even though we're leaving the dry wet at 50%, we're still gonna hear some of that bright kind of nasally stuff, but if you have headphones on, you can really hear the difference between that and this. And then we have some erosion to bring back some of that noise. Saturator, pedal, amp. Then I mean, the juice is coming from the amp. But listen to how much different it sounds. Like, I'm going to leave all the post-processing on except for that overdrive. Listen to how much different it sounds. It's like night and day because that input filter is re-sculpting the timbre of the sound before it goes into all the distortion. A little cleanup EQ. And that's our stack of sounds. 
and that's kind of making up the bulk of both drops. The only difference is in the B sections, what I did was I lowered this layer an octave. So just took it down one octave, everything else is the same. Cool. So next piece is going to be the response. Bulk of this sound actually comes from a frequency shifter verb throw. I've frequency shifted this sound, but it doesn't turn on until the reverb throw kicks in. You kind of hear at the end there, it almost bites up in pitch. It's a very subtle change, but like in the context of, of things, it really added a lot of character to that sound. And then we have these glitches down here. And this is just a really complimentary layer to that. Yeah. And then I'm using the original drop chugs, like right here, to help with flow over the course of this bar. So we got like. In the second half here, there's another sound that comes in. It's the same glitch layer. But I believe what I did, yeah, I went in and kind of messed with different warp modes and found a cool layer difference between this one and this one by switching it to tones mode and then going down an octave. And that made our B section really shine. My big thing with a lot of the music I write is I like to change genres in the middle. And I felt like switching, because since we're in 130, going into house in the second drop would be a really cool option. So this whole break is all about introducing that house pocket so that the crowd's ready for it and they're ready for the switch up. So just added some perks here. And most of it comes from this think break right here. So um, if you're not familiar with the think break, it's just like, here, let me see, think break, that. But this vocal is commonly over it, right? So I just took the drums from that and sampled it. So that's kind of giving us this, the pace over the course of the next eight bars. Add a clap. Some extra perk loops too. But what I've done here is put the clap on the two and the four because that's going to happen in the in the uh, in the drop. So even though the kick isn't really establishing that four four groove yet, we're starting to creep into it by putting the clap on the two and four because that's gonna happen later anyway. So then. Get back into a build, same thing, but. This upbeat house hat right here is kind of what does it. Um, that totally changes the mood. And what I did was I grabbed stems from another track on the album my enemy and i just used the drums that were in or the top drums that were in that track because i thought they were perfect so when you're doing when you're doing genre switches in the middle of songs you want to again foreshadow something that's going to happen in the next session and again we're creeping in that synth too so um kind of getting back to the familiar theme of the first drop, but we have this new house pocket and this kind of new house flavor. Right, so... What's different is one, the drums. So obviously we have this new pocket, but when this kind of theme started right out of the gate, it felt very aggressive and dancey right out of the jump. Whereas like if this was the lead, it didn't feel 
like it had the same kind of energy coming out of the buildup. Um, so that is quite literally all I did. I changed the drums and then I flipped the call and response. The sound design is the exact same. Bit of a lazy copy paste, but when you hear this whole song from start to finish, it's a really, it's still really effective. Um, and I just tried not to overthink it. So, See what it would have sounded like in the other way just for experimentation pretty sure i tried it and i didn't like it no it's not even, it's not even close while yes it's kind of copy paste it's still super effective in this format it feels a lot different from drop a to b because we're flipping the sounds around and using them in a different order to evoke a new emotion. That is the Digital Underground VIP. Again, if you are a Patreon member, I'm going to be leaving the stems uh, for you to download, and I want to hear what you guys come up with. I hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough, and let me know what songs from the VIP album you want me to break down next. I'm certainly gonna do more of them, and yeah, thanks so much, guys. Let's talk to you soon.